let's look at the physiology of hunger because this is the number one complaint that a lot of people have especially if you've been following the standard american diet you know the food pyramid and you're most likely carb dependent so when researchers did studies about hunger when people fast for 24 hours one of the things they measured was ghrelin which is the hunger hormone the higher it is the hungrier you are they found that for the average person that eats three square meals a day ghrelin peaks three times a day breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's a learned response. The question is, what happens if you don't eat? What happens if you skip a meal? Does ghrelin just keep going up and then you enter the dreaded starvation mode? The answer is no. In fact, what researchers found was that ghrelin peaks and then it just goes down. If you don't eat, it'll fall within a couple hours right down to baseline. It's like a kid throwing a tantrum. If you ignore them, eventually they'll stop. Which means that at 7 a.m. or whenever you normally eat breakfast, you're hungry. Sure. If you don't eat by 9 a.m., your hunger level is the same whether you actually ate or not. So how do we explain this phenomenon? Well, you are the owner of a body that is a byproduct of two and a half million years of evolution. The human body is really smart. It knows what to do. It's simply tapped into your stored energy, whether that's glycogen or body fat to fuel itself. That's why your hunger went away. This also explains why you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to eat. Your body just taps into stored energy. And that should immediately free a lot of people from this fear that something bad will happen if you don't eat. It's actually quite the opposite. A lot of good things happen when you take a break from eating. And I'm going to show you some of those things in a second. The key is you have to put yourself in the best position possible to succeed. How? Well, you need to stay busy. We are all creatures of habits as human beings. The best way to get rid of an old habit is replace it with a new one, a better one. Don't just sit on your dining table reminiscing about food and thinking about how hungry you are. That's not very productive. You need to stay busy and we've all done this by accident. Whether you're working on a home renovation project or maybe you're working on something on the computer, you're powering through because you're just in the zone. Sometimes you just forget to eat. You just have to be more intentional about it. You can go for a walk and or exercise to replace your scheduled meal. For the first three weeks, I'd probably just start with a brisk walk as your body goes through a bit of an adaptation period. Once you build your metabolic machinery, you can do fasted workouts that comes with its own sets of benefits. The other thing you can do to help with hunger is drink water, green tea, or black coffee. The amount of caffeine in two cups of coffee, for example, doubles the amount of ketone production, which turns off ghrelin. The hunger goes away. What's even more interesting is when you look at studies where they get people to fast for multiple days, ghrelin goes up as expected, but after two days, it starts to go down. By the end of day two, day three, and so on, the hunger almost completely goes away. And that's exactly what I experienced when I did a seven day water fast with my mom a couple of years ago. By day three, I wasn't hungry anymore. My body has completely switched fuel sources. It's now tapping into my body fat for energy and I felt amazing the entire time. I felt like I could see through walls and taste sound. To debunk the myth that you start losing muscle when you fast, I decided to work out every day. And even at day seven, I was still able to do 90% of my max lifts. So no, you're not gonna start withering away. Certain mechanisms in your body gets triggered like growth hormone to prevent that from happening. Again, the human body is really smart. The real superstar was my 60 year old mom because she wasn't even doing any sort of intermittent fasting when she did it with me. She just wanted to join me and she lost a ton of weight and she felt great the entire time. My point is hunger is simply part of the process when you're just starting out. It's just something that you have to deal with until your body adapts. I'm not even asking you to fast for seven days. I'm only asking you to fast intermittently by skipping a meal. The secret sauce is you need to stay busy. Again, go for a walk or exercise because on the other side, is just pure magic. Fasting has profound anti-inflammatory, cellular repair, and immune boosting benefits. For example, it triggers the production of glutathione, which is known as the master antioxidant. More importantly, your body is going to start burning body fat to fuel itself. Remember, that's what it's there for. It's not just there for looks. It's stored energy waiting to be used. Fasting also moderates blood sugar and insulin because you're going to burn glucose and store glycogen, which is what prevents you from being diabetic. That exact same mechanism also prevents you from getting chronic disease like cancer and Alzheimer's in the long term. Remember, your health and longevity is directly tied to the amount of insulin your body has to produce over your lifetime. As you can see, you get access to all kinds of benefits. The best part? It's free. 
you can drastically lower your risk of some of the biggest killers in modern society without taking a bunch of medication, which can come with some nasty side effects like statins, for example. This is why I always say that if the benefits of fasting could be put in a pill, it would be the single greatest blockbuster medication of all time, right next to exercise. And again, they're both free. You can give yourself a daily dose. You can do it literally right now and start getting immediate benefits. Instead, we get fear mongered to not do it. It's conventional wisdom to do the complete opposite. Never skip a meal. I mean, it's more like conventional stupidity if you ask me. Intermittent fasting also transcends the diet wars for the most part. I'm a big proponent of an ancestral style eating pattern where a big portion of your diet comes from eating nutrient dense animal foods. And then you eat non starchy vegetables that your body tolerates along with some seasonal fruit. But intermittent fasting works with any diet because you get to pull on a completely different lever apart from whatever diet you're following. Another benefit is extremely flexible and powerful. You can really do it whenever you want and however long you want. If you're on holidays, for example, and you don't want to fast for a few days, that's fine. And then if you want to string together a few 24 hour fasting days afterwards, or even a seven day water fast, like what I did, that works as well. But when you do it, it's efficacy when it comes to specifically targeting body fat and burning it for energy is unparalleled. I mean, name a diet that's more powerful. I'll wait. Because if you follow any type of diet, there's always a natural limit. You're bound to the rules and restrictions of that diet. When it comes to fasting, there's no actual upper limit to what you can do. It's extremely powerful because you're eating zero, which means by definition, the most powerful diet for weight loss is when you don't eat. If you're 50 pounds overweight, for example, and you want to lose weight, let's just do some simple math here. Like a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. A moderately active person can probably easily live off of 1,800 calories, which means that you can technically fast for 100 days and just live off of your stored body fat for energy. I mean, I'm not saying you should do it. It's better if you fast intermittently and spread it out so you can have a life. But just to put your mind at ease, the longest recorded fast is actually 382 days by a guy named Angus Barbarian. He was grossly obese, tipping the scales at 456 pounds, and he lost a mind-bending 276 pounds just living off of water, coffee, tea, and some vitamins. He weighed in at 180 pounds after and was able to keep the weight off even five years later. Now, what's the best intermittent fasting schedule? I have a completely separate video where I break down this topic in further detail, but the minimum effective dose is a 16 hour fast. Ideally, you're only eating two meals and definitely no snacking. However, a study in the New England Journal of Medicine called Effects of Intermittent Fasting on Health, Aging, and Disease states that evidence is accumulating that eating in a six hour period and fasting for 18 hours can trigger a metabolic switch from glucose based to ketone based energy with increased stress resistance, increased longevity, and a decreased incidence of diseases. In short, an 18 hour fast effectively hacks the human metabolism. Sounds good to me. That's exactly the intermittent fasting schedule I follow these days. I break my fast at 1.30 in the afternoon, and then I'm done eating at 7.30 p.m. And I get it, it might take some time to build up the metabolic machinery to train yourself to just eat two meals in a six hour window. But it's a great long term goal. Again, just start with a 16 hour fast. Eventually, just extend your fast to 18 hours as you become more metabolically flexible. And then throw in the occasional day where you do a 20 or even a 24 hour fast. On the days when you don't have it, it's okay to break your fast early. The problem is the average person actually eats in a 15 hour window every day, which is basically your entire waking hours. Now, Dr. Courtney Peterson did a similar study in pre-diabetic men and generated similar results. Switching from a 12 hour eating window to a six hour eating window lowered the subject's blood pressure, insulin levels, appetite, and oxidative stress. At night, they were less hungry and had increased rates of fat burning. Keep in mind, they ate the same amount of calories. Simply switching their eating window gave them those benefits. And as you build your metabolic machinery, it's okay to have a treat every once in a while. It's part of living an awesome life. Just remember that there's a time to feast and there's a time to fast. As you become more metabolically flexible, your body should be able to handle it. If you think about it, fasting is actually the oldest dietary intervention in the books. You're just relearning how to use it. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to keep doing a deep dive because there's so much more to learn, then you're going to love this one. I'll see you there.